This is the Ask a Photographer podcast, answering your photography-related questions about general photography, workflow, editing, business, and marketing. To submit a question, go to beblino.com forward slash ask. Hello, and thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast. My name is Mike, and I'm from beblino.com. Today's question is about taking better pictures with your digital SLR. And the question comes from Connor. And Connor says, after recently getting a new DSLR for the family, my wife and I have made it a point to learn how to take better photos of our kids. What are some things to consider when taking photos of the family? Hey, Connor, thanks for your question. Uh, Look, let's start off with learning your camera equipment because really I think this is the most simplest and most basic thing you could do with a new camera. You've got to learn where all the dials are. You've got to learn what all the buttons and and menus do. Even if you don't use them, you will down the track and you just need to know where everything is. And to do that, other than playing with the camera, is to actually read the manual. I know, boring, but you've got to do it. It's one of those things where um, the manual will basically tell you how the manufacturer expects you to use their camera. Okay, same thing applies for anything, right? (laughs) We've all got to read the manual uh, if we want the optimum results here. And, you know, the manual also has other things such as troubleshooting tips, which are usually at the back of the book. It also talks about accessories. Um, You know, it even tells you, um, I know my my manual even tells you how to hold the camera. So it's one of those things where as much as we we loathe reading manuals, you've just got to do it. And um, what I find is, Looking at the index and just finding different topics that I want to learn about is, is cuts at that boredom because, uh, you know, after the first couple of chapters, you think, oh, you know, when am I going to get? Because it's usually the most basic at the, at the beginning. So, yeah, just skip to different chapters if, if you're finding it a little bit boring. And uh, that way, uh, um, hopefully you'll, you will get something out of it. As you're getting out of uh, auto mode, and, you know, you've used the camera for a little while and, you know, auto will, will take you to a certain degree. You know, auto will take you to a certain point. Once the conditions become a little bit trickier or you want to get a little more creative, that's when you need to know about uh, manual modes or the creative modes and then also knowing your shutter speed, aperture and ISO. So the ISO is is how sensitive this, this sensor is to light. Uh, the lower ISO, which is you generally use when it's very bright, and uh, the higher so is when it's quite dark, like indoors, if you don't want to use any flash or even with flash. So, you know, the aperture um, dictates um, how much light is coming through the actual lens. And also shutter speed, you know, you, you, you use that to, to freeze your, your objects. Or, um, you know, if, say for instance, you've got somebody running and, you know, if you have a high shutter speed, um, you'll freeze the action. But if you have a slow shutter speed, um, it'll make the photo a bit blurry, um, maybe make it washed out because uh, it's, it's allowing too much light in. So they all allow basically light into the camera um, and changing one affects the others. And what I do recommend is um, if you're going to change anything, you just change one of these at a time. Don't change them all. You know, putting your shutter speed, then aperture, and then maybe changing ISO. And, you know, maybe um, that could be one way you can try. But what I would do recommend, though, is once you're comfortable and you want to get out of auto mode, go to YouTube, type in shutter speed, aperture and ISO, and there's going to be stacks of videos um, that you can visually see um, how, how to, uh, what the, by changing these settings, what, what actually comes from them. So that's that's something you can do when you become a bit more comfortable. It doesn't matter if it's your digital solar or, or your mobile phone. You've got to take photos every day, and this will help you help your mind get used to taking photos and and and, and just reading situations. You know, when you don't want boring photos of the kids looking straight at the camera, going cheese. Like, man, we do them. You do them every day, right? You do them at birthday parties. But what you want in to take better photos of the family would be to take natural, candid photos, and if your kids see you take photos every day, they'll, they won't even think about it. It'll become an everyday thing. And therefore, you'll get more natural photos. You'll blend into the background. Um, when they hear a shutter go, they won't even turn around. In the beginning, they will. They go, oh, you're taking my photo. And, you know, 
and then they'll put their hands up or they act silly. But you know, hey, maybe they're photos you want. But taking photos every day is important. Good way to document the family. I, um, it's something that I try to do uh, myself and making a book at the end of all the photos is, is quite nice. Now, next would be to take lots of photos. Now, taking photos every day is one thing, but taking lots of photos when you are taking photos is, is very important. So think of it this way. You know when we take a photo of like a, a, a group of people, you go, all right, everybody look towards the camera and you take the photo. And there's for some silly reason, someone's looking away, eyes are closed, mouths have got some weird, you know, teeth hanging out. You know, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where if you take one photo, right, and then move on, you've just got that photo that just doesn't look right. What I recommend is maybe taking two or three photos of the same object. Now, that works quite well if you've got a group of people, but what happens if you're taking at a scene like, um, say for instance, you're taking a photo of a landscape and there's this ugly pole in the way. Well, if you just put your camera up and you take it and then you review it on the back of your LCD and you go, oh, you know what? There's a lamppost here. Let's just move to the side. So you move to the side. And then when you, when you say that you move to the side and you go, oh, hang on, the photo looks slightly different. It's looking a little bit more pleasing, a little bit better to the eye. Well, then maybe changing your um, angle, so maybe getting lower or getting higher. You know, you're still taking photos of the same thing, but you're doing it slightly different every single time. So I'm not saying to take the same photo five times exactly the same way. Change it slightly and see how your photos will um, will come out. And I, I bet you that um, you'll get a lot more keepers and you'll be a lot happier with, with the photos, that's for sure. The next would be framing and composing your photos. As, as I've just briefly, briefly mentioned about, you know, objects that we don't want in our photo, that's, that's the decision that you're making before you actually press the shutter button. It's going to make or break your photo. If you, you know, if you take one photo and then you see that, okay, there's, there's somebody straight, bang straight in the middle. Well, you know, putting them to the side, just off center, will make the photo a little bit more uh, a pleasing to our eye. Um, not too sure why that happens, but it's just how it is. And that's where the rule, rule of thirds c comes into play. So just like a tic-tac-toe board, you know, where the lines intersect, um, if you can imagine that on a rectangle, and um, placing your objects of interest on those lines where they intersect will um, get you a bit more pleasing um, photos. Now, it's not to say that everything has to be done like that, but you need to try that first and then Compose your photo and see what um, you know what works best. And once again, I mean, as you can see, all these elements I've mentioned, they all kind of interlink with each other. So, you know, if you're taking more photos of the same object, well, you know, maybe recompose, try something different, or if there's something distracting, well, then turn the camera away. You know, you've just got to keep on taking more and more photos. The next is, is slowing down and pre-visualizing the photo. This is quite important because if you're just taking a photo. Put your camera up, take the photo, and then you move on. You're just taking a snapshot, and literally, it's it's you're not really giving any thought. Um, hey, anybody can do that, um, you know. But if you give it a little bit more thought, and you know, compose a little bit better, um, maybe take you know two or three photos of of the same scene that you're thinking. Okay, well, if I take it from this angle, or if I go a little bit higher or a little bit lower, or then you know, you can also use pre-visualizing as well. You know, I'm taking this photo and I'm picturing as black and white. Well, black and white works on lightness and darkness or contrast. And, you know, if your photo is full of uh, lots of dark, well, then it's not really going to be a nice photo. Or if it's very white, it's, you know, it's, it may not turn out that well. So pre-visualizing of how you want the photos to be will help you slow down and it won't just get you to basically shoot and pray you know shooting thousands of photos and hopefully you get one we don't want that we want to even though we're taking lots of photos we want to make them all count well most of them count you know um so that's that's something you you should be i guess thinking about every time you take a photo and the more photos you take especially if you're taking photos every day it's going to become so natural it's you know you you'll know that oh okay i'm going to take a photo oh but then i'm going to move to a side or i'm going to get low or a bit higher or you know where to place someone because of your uh, previous experience so the next would be to learn to read the light now photography is all about light 
Okay, it's basically a Greek word that means lighting, uh, writing with light. And if you have good light, good quality light, and and um, the color of light of, of all make or break your photo. They all, um, I guess, uh, are important as each other. So good quality light, you know, example would be, say for instance, I'm in a darkly lit room with one light that's the tungsten light. Well, everything is going to be blue and it's just going to look wrong, right? <laughs> um, it's not good quality light. Yes, it's a different colored light, but it's not really desirable if you want to take pictures of, say, um, I don't know, your kids. Now, if you want to get a certain feel and you want to use the blue to your advantage, yeah, that's fine. You can do that. But, you know, good quality light, say, for instance, in the middle of the day, very harsh, intense, bright light. You can still take photos in bright sunlight, but, you know, you're using um, uh, shaded areas or using, uh, let's see, reflectors um, to... to Get rid of some of the light, uh, you know, is, is, is one way. So, you know, beginning of the day, in the afternoon, you know, nice golden warm light. So there's a uh, light is, is is not harsh, but it's also soft. And, and, and so the warmth of, of the orange and the yellows, you know, puts a nice little glow on our skin. Even if we've got pasty skin, it's nice little warm, like a little you kiss by the sunlight. Uh, it's really, really nice. Um, you know, bring the kids out to the park. Uh, maybe um, get them to play and uh, chasing around each other and you know seeing seeing what what happens you know when you have the light in front of, sorry when the sun is to your back or when you the sun is towards their back you know see the different different um, uh, types of uh, results you get from there and you know the thing is the thing about reading light is it's one of those things you've just got to keep on taking photos and when you look at your photos after you can go ah Okay, well, now I know that if I put my kids in shaded areas, uh, this is the results. If I put them right next to a window, uh, you know, one of my favorite things to do is is getting uh, sliding door windows, right? Putting kids in front of that, and so your back is towards the window, and they're facing you. Gorgeous. The the, the light that, that hits their face because it's such a big light source um, is really nice and, and pleasing. It's 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 uh, soft and uh, and makes any any crappy photos look good it's it's um it's it's really good and it's one of the things that when i take photos inside I, it's the first thing i do come and stand here even though everyone else is in the other side of the room they've got to stand where i want them to <laughs> that way you get really really nice pictures and then you won't be disappointed and um the next would be simple post-processing look i know there's all these presets that are out there and they say there's a you know, one click preset means that, you know, you if you're in Lightroom and, you know, you, you basically you're clicking one button and it does it all for you. Well, look, you know, that does work to a certain point. The, the When presets are designed, they are designed in such a way where they're using a sample photo and that sample photo has a certain exposure um, and if, uh, a lot, uh, as, as well as other, other elements, but... Um, using that reference photo, if your photo is not close to that, then your results from that preset is going to be different. Now, I, in full dis disclaimer, I actually sell presets myself. And, you know, I, I sell a system of presets where, uh, you know, there are one-click presets, so to speak. But I always say to people, if they're a good starting point. You know, you, you apply the preset and then you make adjustments. And that's why it's very important to know about exposure, you know, knowing how to make your photo light and dark, adding a little bit of contrast, uh, adding a little bit of sharpening, um, you know, knowing about highlights. So, you know, when you're outside and, and there's parts of, you know, if it's a white shirt or um, parts of people's faces and it's quite, quite bright, well, that's the highlight. And, and knowing what to do with a slider to make that um, come back to normal is very, very important. So keeping your post-processing simple. If you can have a well-exposed photo um, in nice pleasing light your post processing is going to be cut to almost nothing because what I generally do is just a simple lighting or darkening of the photo I may crop it a little bit more because of the lens that I had that uh, didn't didn't quite allow me to get closer or, or, or I was just too far away physically um, 
And then, you know, adding a little bit of sharpening, a bit of contrast, and uh, I think really that's it. I don't do do too much to my photos, and the photos come across quite natural, and that's and that's the look that I go for. If you want to apply presets, that's cool. That's a great way to learning, but you should learn what um, what is, what changes the, the presets are making, um, so you can mimic those yourself, and therefore um, understand what the software is doing to your photos. The next would be. Uh, keeping your equipment simple. I know that you've only just started and, and you may only have one lens or two lens. I um, I tend to, if I'm photographing my my family, I usually use like one lens and I don't sit there and changing lenses and, and because I'm going to miss moments. If you just have one lens, one camera body and you just, you know, quickly uh, take take um, take photos of, of the family that way, it's, it's actually quite, um, well... <sighs> It's quite liberating because you don't have all this extra equipment to think about. You can concentrate on the actual subject, okay? And it could be the kids, it could be a, um, a landscape, it could be could be anything really. Um, and but keeping it simple with one camera lens and, and and one camera, and you know if you are shooting the kids, or actually photographing, I shouldn't say shooting, but you are photographing the kids, um, putting on to burst mode. You know I said before take multiple photos, but sometimes kids can be quite uh, quite quick. Um, you know, putting it to burst mode and, and keeping your finger down for four or five photos and then picking the one that you like because they're moving very fast is, is one way of um, getting some nice photos. Also, holding your camera proper, properly. This is actually very important. We all should learn how to hold the camera properly because it stops camera shake. Quality of photos will, will, will elevate once we can get nice sharp photos. So standing up and if you can put your body to 90 degrees to the actual subject and then have your feet at 90 degrees and then using your arms up against your body, your torso and then obviously holding one hand with the camera body with one hand and then the lens, the one the sorry, the hand that's holding the lens is to cup the bottom of the lens. Don't hold the top, to cup the bottom of the lens. And what this does is you're just stabilizing the lens and you can zoom that way if you have a zoom lens. But by putting your elbows towards your torso, you're, getting, you're anchoring yourself. By putting your feet at uh, 90 degree angles, you know, a little uh, like shoulder width apart, and, and you're 90 degrees to the actual subject, you're anchoring yourself. Also, before you're about to take the photo, hold your breath. Don't, <gasps> and then, you know, really hold as if you're doing a deep sea dive. Just breathe normally, and then just hold your breath for a split second as you're pressing the button, and then release. Because... Um, as if you're breathing while you're actually pressing the shutter and you're taking multiple photos, well, as you're breathing, the um, camera camera will go up and down because your um, your uh, your lungs will be moving your arms because they're anchored towards your torso. And uh, lastly, cleaning your equipment. Uh, there's just like anything, if you want to function properly, you know, keeping the lens clean, uh, the front and the back elements. Don't change your lenses in a windy, sandy area. Uh, most cameras come with a, a lens cleaning um, a mode on their camera. Um, use that. Uh, if you really need to uh, to get it done uh, properly, then obviously you can get it done professionally or even you can buy a kit online. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things where you've got to do... Um, you've, got to, you've got to do it regularly for, for your camera to function correctly. And the same thing applies to your mobile phone. Man, how many times have you pulled out a phone and you've taken a phone and you go, oh, wow, that's, uh, you know, um, it's not so sharp. I bet if you look at your lens on your mobile phone, um, there's all lint and who knows what else stuck for, from, your, um, from your pocket or um, a lady's handbag. Um, so that's, that's my tips there, Connor. I, I hope uh they give you something to think about and uh, you and your wife enjoy photography because it really is a wonderful thing and especially if you're photographing the family it's very very important to take multiple photos every day if you can um, these are the times that we need to cherish our our, uh, our kids as they grow up and and creating and doing something with the photos you know create you know create an album you know it's very easy to go and and, and use blurb um, upload your photos using their software and, you know, in a few days' time you have this beautiful album that, uh, um, you know, you guys will cherish, you know, or even printing canvases. Go down to a local store, print a canvas, frame it, you know. So good on you for getting a digital SLR, Connor, and uh, I hope those tips help you out. 
If you have a question that you'd like featured on the show, go to biblino.com forward slash ask to submit your question. I'd love to hear what you think of the show by going to iTunes or Stitcher and giving me a review and a rating. And don't forget to subscribe so you get notifications of new episodes. Thanks for listening. Until next time, get out and take more photos. Oh, look, it's a cat in front of a sunset.